Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I know it's been a minute, but I'm so happy to have my good friend Angel back with us on the channel. And on her, I'm creating a look that was completely unexpected, but in the best possible way. So if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm taking the plexiglass illuminator along with the superfood facial oil from Elemis, mixing them together in my hands and applying it onto Angel's skin. You always see me mixing in the plexiglass into the skincare for that glowy finish. A little of this goes a long way. And the same goes for the Elemis oil drops here. Only three to four drops is plenty. And I do want to say for the month of June, my beauty brand, which is the brand I created the plexiglass illuminator with, is donating 15% of profits from all of the plexiglass purchases to the Trevor Project, which is an organization you've heard me talk a lot about before on my channel. It means a lot to me. They, they provide crisis intervention and suicide prevention services to LGBTQ plus youth and young adults. So we're really proud, with your help, of course, to be getting involved with a really great cause. So yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on. I'm using the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation in the shade 260 Cashmere and applying this on with a makeup sponge. I think this is a, a pretty good match. Uh, her chest is a little tanner than her face, so this will help create some balance. I'm using this because we were at dinner the other night and of course we start talking makeup. She's talking about which products she's using nowadays and all that. You know how that is. So I start talking about this foundation because you all know how much I love it, but Angel has never used it before, and I've never used it on her before. At least, I don't think so. So hopefully after today, she loves it as much as I do. Now, once I have this blended in, I'm then using this Bobbi Brown Cream Color Corrector in the shade Peach Bisque, and I'm pressing this in around the eye area with a flat concealer brush. We're going to apply concealer on top, so we don't need a whole lot of this product. I think we see a lot of times on social media people applying tons of bright red and orange pigments to color correct, but re realistically, it's not necessary. Of course, everyone's different, but you'll see here in a second the finished result we get. For concealer, I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Light 2.4 and applying this on top of the color corrector. I'll even bring this down a bit to add some coverage around the nostrils because I really didn't go in too heavy with the foundation today. We're keeping it on the medium coverage side. And I chose this concealer shade for her because it's not you know, obnoxiously bright. You know what I mean? We're still gonna add in the bronzer around the face and contour and bake with the powder and all. So we'll eventually get that effect later on. But as of now, I just wanna work on getting a really seamless base to build on, which you can start to see here with the side-by-side -side and the difference a little color corrector and concealer can make. Now I'm gonna follow the very same steps on the other eye. I'll use my ring finger to press in the color corrector this time follow up with the concealer on top, and then finish off using my sponge to blend and press everything in. Alrighty, so now that we have this concealer blended, we're gonna be back in a second to set this with powder, but in the meantime, I'm gonna use this Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in the shade Medium to add some warmth back to her skin. I do this by applying this on with a dense blush brush and press it into the areas of the skin I wanna add back some dimension to, such as the forehead, cheeks, and jawline. This is another product you don't need a lot of. Everyone has their way of applying this, but what I find gives me the best, most seamless result is applying it on with a brush and slowly building it up. I don't like going in with harsh lines and all that. It creates more work for me in terms of the blending. And then I also don't have as much control with the amount of product I, I want to apply. So by lightly tapping it into the skin, 
I'm building up the pigment exactly where I want it. It still looks natural, there's no harsh lines, and this makes for a really great start to build bronzer on top of once we set this with powder. And if you've found that you've applied on just a little too much of this, it's an easy fix. Just head back to the sponge or brush you used to apply on your foundation with and use what's left in there to diffuse out the pigment and tone it down. To set the products, I'm using the one size translucent setting powder and with a powder puff, I'm lightly pressing this powder into the under eye area. Now, because this concealer has been sitting here for a few minutes while we've been applying on the cream bronzer, there could be some creasing that has occurred. And if that's the case, just grab your sponge and blend it right out before applying the powder. You don't wanna apply powder on top of creased makeup because all it's going to do is lock those creases into place. So you got to blend it out first. It's almost like um, it's almost like ironing clothes. Before you put the hot iron on a shirt, you got to make sure the shirt is completely flat, right? It's the same. It's the <laughs> okay. I don't know if that's you know if that was the best metaphor to use, but hopefully you get where I'm going with this. You know, I'm just going to finish setting the rest of this makeup, and I'll be right back. Okay, we, we've locked this makeup into place, so now I'm taking this Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker Bronzer in the shade Island Teen and using this to reinforce the cream bronzer we applied earlier. I like this bronzer for her because it's, it's, it has the yellow undertones to it that fits her skin tone. And the formula is also completely matte. There's no shimmer in it. I personally don't like bronzers that have shimmer in it because well, especially for on camera. It, it can be pretty in real life in direct sunlight or something like that, but on camera, shimmer just reads differently. So I'm little by little, I'm gonna continue building this up in the areas I want to by lightly tapping it in. For extra dimension, I'm taking the center brow book and using this to contour with. On TikTok lately, I've been talking about using brow powders to contour with, so I thought I'd just show you. It's honestly one of the best hacks because usually brow powders have a cooler undertone to them, which mimics a realistic shadow. But notice I'm not applying this the same way I did the bronzer. I'm keeping this much more precise by applying it with an eyeshadow brush just to the hollows of her cheeks and along her jawline and also a tad bit to the temples. The trick here to keeping this natural looking is using a very small amount to a point where it's barely noticeable, which really is what contour should be. You want someone to see you and think, wow, they look chiseled, not wow, your, your contour is intense. <laughs> Does that make sense? By the way, in, in case you're wondering here, I'm using the shade of Flaxen from this palette to do this with. Okay, next, I'm heading back to the one size powder we used earlier to set the makeup with, and I'm using this to bake with along the under eye area and jawline. This will brighten and add more strength and structure to her face when applied to the jawline. And it'll do the same for the under eye area, but more than anything, it's gonna catch any fallout we get later on from the eye makeup and prevent our under eye complexion makeup from being completely ruined. <laughs> and then of course, later on, we'll wipe this all off. To begin on the brows, I'm going to use the very same Senna brow palette we used earlier to contour with and use this to start filling in and shaping her brows. Now everybody is going to be different here in, in terms of the shades to use to fill in the brows, but I will say that I used about three different shades from this palette for Angel because I like starting with a lighter shade first to start mapping out the shape I want, and then I build on that to create more structure with deeper shades. And I also mix together the different undertones from those powders, which is most important to me and why I love this brow palette so much. It's not something you can really get in a Sephora, but I know you can get it online. I'll put a link down below. I'm pretty sure camera ready cosmetic sells it if i'm not mistaken it is kind of pricey though i think i paid 80 or or 90 dollars or something like that which is it's a lot of money <laughs> for me at least especially for a brow palette but i can justify that price tag because i would rather spend that money on something that i would use every single day rather than on a i don't know like a high-end luxury eyeshadow palette 
that will just end up sitting in a drawer collecting dust. And this is something I do use every single day for many things, the contour, the, the brows, even the eyeshadow, which you'll see here in just a minute. But first, I'm gonna take the Essence Tinted Eyebrow Gel in the shade Blondie Brows and run this through her brow hairs. This is another product I highly recommend, and it's a little more affordable. It's only a few bucks. This shade will lighten her brow hairs and give a nice tint to them, which I think looks really nice with her blonde hair. I like the tiny wand this has. Oh, <laughs> uh oh. You may want to be a little more careful than I am with this, but <laughs> if you get any on the brow bone, it'll wipe right off. But yeah, I like the wand. I like the formula. And overall, it just does a really nice job and it does what I need it to. Now for the eyelids, I'm going to blend out the concealer with my finger, set it with a setting powder, and then we can move on to the eye makeup. To begin, I'm using this Armani Beauty Black Smooth Silk Eye Pencil and running this through the upper lash line, keeping it quite close to the lashes. I'm starting this placement with the outer corner where I want it to be the most bold. And as I work my way towards the inner corner of the eye, I'll thin out the liner. Once I have this liner placed, I'm then having Angel look straight ahead so I can see where her eyelid crease is. And then with the pencil, I'm lightly tracing through the crease. This is where I wanna start building the shape I'm trying to create. It's gonna be a little messy at first, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect right off the bat. The goal here is to lay down the blueprint and then we'll later fine tune all the details. After this, I'm taking a smaller eyeshadow blending brush and running this along the liner we had just applied to start diffusing it out and extending it outwards. Because we haven't set the liner with shadow or anything like that yet, there's still some movement to it. So we're gonna take advantage of that and mold it to the shape we're trying to create, which is very catty and very lifted, which is why I'm dragging this outwards. And then with some black eyeshadow, I'm tracing along that liner to uh, like set it and to further um, like darken it. You know, it, <laughs> I'm trying to act like I know what I'm talking about, but, but honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. In real time, I'm figuring this all out with you. Like it was, it was my plan to play it safe and just do a bronzy glittery eye look today, but things kind of took a turn here. I'm just building and, and, and blending, building and blending in hopes that this turns out halfway decent. The shadows I'm using here are the same ones from the, the Senna Brow Palette. So I'm not even using a proper eyeshadow palette for this look. I'm just using what we already have, the grays, the taupes, the, the blacks and using them together to build this up. I think it's best that you just observe how I do it because I couldn't even begin to explain to you what I'm doing here because I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just having fun with it, stepping out of my comfort zone and trying something I haven't done before. I don't know. And of all models, I feel like I'm in good company doing this on Angel because if worse comes to worse and it turns out terrible, we'll wipe it off and start over and she's not gonna judge me for it. But plot twist, I'll tell you, it does turn out pretty good. Not perfect, but I, I can live with how it turned out. So I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna blend, apply a little more of that liner pencil, add a little more shadow, blend some more, and you'll see how it all comes together. All right, I do wanna pop in and say real quick here that I'm using a foundation powder here to clean up the lid just below the crease and also to brighten and sharpen the inner corner. This is the one size turn up the base powder foundation and I think it's in the shade Light 4N. But you can do this with a lighter eyeshadow if you want. You can even do this with a concealer, which is what I often see people do to cut the crease, but I just don't trust myself with a liquid product right now. My hands are way too shaky. I feel like I would just ruin the look. So I find a foundation powder gives me the coverage I need to clean up the lines, 
but it's also less of a commitment than using a concealer. And for the lower lid here, I've used some brow powder to give a slight smokiness to the outer half of the lower lash line, and then running the pencil just in the inner and outer corner of the waterline. Then I'm taking this Too Faced liquid eyeliner pen and running this along where we had applied the pencil. This is gonna make that lash line super black and pigmented, giving more contrast and depth to the final look. You can use this to fine tune the details, clean up the lines that are looking a little wonky, <laughs> and overall just make things a little more dramatic. Now the tricky part here is trying to replicate this on the other eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye off camera and then use the Charlotte Tilbury Push Up Lashes Mascara to coat her top lashes with. I'm being sure to really get in there at the root of her lashes because I want the false lashes we apply after this to really blend into her lash line. And we'll come back later for the bottom lashes. The falsies I'm using today are from the Kiss Lash Drip Collection in the shade You Do You. I've had these forever and I'm finally using them today. At this point, I was like, <laughs> let's just go for it. And wait till you see, uh, oh, 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 oh. beautiful, right? I never used these because I thought they looked a little too dramatic for my style of makeup, but I kid you not, when when both Angel and I saw how these lashes looked on her, she got on her phone and she ordered them. I also ordered more earlier this morning. By the way, I, I'm just applying that Charlotte Tilbury mascara on the bottom lashes here, but uh, yeah, I'm head over heels in love with these lashes. They're affordable, they're wispy, they're dramatic, but not in a, in a cheesy way. And they really pulled this whole eye makeup look together. I don't know how that happened, but by the grace of God, it all worked out. So now I'm just gonna wipe away that setting powder we've let sit here to bake, and I'm adding a little more of that Fenty bronzer to further bronze up the skin. Not a lot though, just a little here and there. For blush today, I'm using this powder blush from MAC in the shade Pink Swoon, and I'm lightly applying this to the apples of her cheeks. I like this shade of blush, but I also really like how it allows you to build it up, which is what you'll see me do here. Their formula doesn't go on overly pigmented and patchy. It looks really beautiful, and I love this shade. In fact, if you have a deeper skin tone, another shade I really like from the MAC blushes that I think you'll like too is the shade Full Fuchsia, I think it's called. It's also a pink, but it has it has more intensity to it, which is why I love using it on deeper skin tones. It's super pretty and worth checking out. Okay, next we're gonna start on the lips using these two liquid lipsticks from About Face in the shades Last Goodnight and Fantasist. I've used these two shades together to create the shade I want for the borders of her lips. One is more on the taupey brown side while the other's more mauvey pink. So by mixing them together, I got the best of both worlds. And this is a matte finish formula. This whole lip is going to be matte today, which is something you're not used to seeing on my channel because <laughs> you know I love my gloss, but I'm continuing this journey today of trying new things and, and not playing it so safe. So we're going to do a matte lip. Now I'm just keeping the placement of this on the border and I'm going to use something different for the center of the lip. I'm going to use this shade here from the Makeup Forever Cinema Cream Color Case and apply this to the center of the lips before I diffuse out the edges with an eyeshadow blending brush for that soft, worn-in ombre effect. Gosh, that eye makeup looks so good. Now I'm sure for those of you who are watching that are really talented with eye makeup, you're probably cringing, but from a distance, you can't really notice the imperfections, which is not really something you wanna hear from your makeup artist, but for me, someone who is not the best with precision work, that's pretty dang good, even up close. In fact, it's borderline majestic. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. Okay, moving on, we, we gotta finish off this look. I'm gonna use this Huda Beauty Glow Cocoa Hydrating Mist to set this makeup into place, which makes this the final step in how I created this dramatic glam on my naturally beautiful friend, Angel.
have it kids, I hope y'all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.